Howdy, folks, and welcome to the uh, the Modern Horror Halloween Special, special edition from the uh, other brown couch. <laughs> we're uh, we're trying to do the horror movie a day thing, so we'll see how it goes. So we do this every year, and we like to have theme weeks. So this week is going to be for Wes Craven because he passed, and that sucks. And so we're watching a good handful of his movies that we haven't seen yet. First movie up is uh, the Wes Craven classic, Last House on the Left, uh, 1972. You know, and I know this is kind of blasphemous, but I think I actually like the remake a little bit better. Yeah, I don't know, there was just too much 70s hokiness. There, there are some things I like better in this movie and some things that I like better about that movie. I think the remake delves into that comfortable horror movie territory where suddenly they're running through the house and um, there's gonna be like some traps and blah 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 and it's not real imaginative. There's very like, oh I'm watching a horror movie now. But that first half of the remake is very, very uncomfortable. And kind of hit familiar territory where it's like, oh this is kind of what I'm expecting out of this movie. Yeah, no, the first half of the, of the remake was really bad, but this is the, the original. We're supposed to be talking about the original. Okay, so the original. <laughs> on the other hand, the original, I it's very hard not to compare movies. Okay, so the original I actually liked a lot. I love the beginning. Where he's like, she's a looker. Like the, the guy on the, um, the, the mailman. And then we cut to her in the shower, and we're just looking at how beautiful she is. Like, she's topless and we're getting close-ups of her eyes which are gorgeous and her skin which is flawless and her beautiful long hair and we're just looking at this beautiful young girl and it's just it feels exploitive and a little creepy and but it felt like it was really setting a nice good tone for the movie yeah i guess they hit the uh, the exploitation angle of it pretty heavy very seven yeah. nobody wears a bra nowadays <laughs> <laughs> I think the, the uh, you know, it was... Here, honey, I bought you this peace sign necklace. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was definitely definitely more exploitation, whereas the, the second one was a little bit more... We want to make you feel bad. Oh. So, I mean, you know, it's not like I felt great watching the first one. <laughs> There's... It was definitely... Alright, so it's a... For those of you who don't know, it's a rape revenge story. Um, so there's two young girls, and I want to say they're 18 just so I feel better, <laughs> that go into a seedy part of a neighborhood and they're looking to buy drugs and they meet these four very strange individuals <laughs> um, who then proceed to rape and kill them. Horror movies. They beat two girls up, they put them in the trunk, they take them out into the woods, they then rape them, and then one of them runs away, then they kill and dismember her, and even like the bad guys are looking down at all this and they're just like... Oh, we're off. Um, and then the parents find out. I think the way the parents find out was a little contrived. Which I, I think the, the, the remake kind of fixes it a little. But the parents find out, and then they proceed with the revenge part, which was just awesome. Everything about <laughs> that was awesome. I really like the second half. It was kind of funny watching the dad in the basement, like, testing out, like, he's got a wrench, and it's like, yeah, this wrench, this'll, this'll do for my revenge. Oh, wait, my shotgun. <laughs> this is even better. And then he's setting up all the Home Alone traps. I mean, it was, it's, and, I mean, we're watching this, and it's kind of, you know, it's awful subject matter, but then you get to the, the parents, and you're just like, Home Alone traps. Great. Setting up a, a tripwire and electrifying the doorknob, and and then when he comes out of the basement with, like, a chainsaw chasing down, it's like, go, daddy, go! And then the mom's chasing this woman through a field with a knife in her hand, screaming. After after killing the first guy by biting his dick off. Oh, yeah, she did that. Like she. I'm, I'm sure there's something. That's how mommy does it. <laughs> <laughs> it was a good movie. I think I... I really liked the ending a lot. And then there was one really good scare. It was a tough scare. Um... Because the dad's a doctor. The, the, the bad guys figure out first that where they are is the home of the girl that they had just raped. And so one of them has a nightmare that the doctor comes into the room with scrubs on. And they're like, 
open your mouth, please. Chisel. Open your mouth, please. And they keep saying that. And then she like keeps opening his mouth and he he's complying. He's very complacent. And then they just very calmly are standing over him, very calmly, like start to chisel his teeth out. <laughs> and then he wakes up, but that was a creepy part. It was really scary. I didn't like the way she died. She just gave up. Yeah, they just kind of shot her in the back while she was trying to, to swim across the lake. They they bring her friends. I don't think she was trying to swim. I think she just went into the water. Just to... Because I think she saw the gun and I think she knew it was going to happen. And then she just got shot in the head. It was, it was very uncomfortable, but very 70s. And there was really horrible dub. The soundtrack was hilarious. It's a little inappropriate. <laughs> uh, 70s exploitation is a little bit tough, I think, in, in 2015. I guess, yeah. you know, they don't really, they didn't really age well. Oh, wait! There's also the d- world's dumbest cops. We didn't talk oh, about Oh, God, them. yeah, the world's worst cops. And the one chicken lady. Well, first off, the cops literally drive past the broken down car of the criminals, which is amazing. And they're just like, oh, well, well yeah, that sucks. And then they actually get stranded. They lose their cop car. They lose the cruiser in the middle of the woods because one of them forgot to put gas in the tank. I liked it when the metalheads drove up and were like, "We hate pigs!" and they like flip them off. Yeah, they're trying to they're trying to hitchhike back to to town and like they just meet these kooky characters. Yeah. Oh yeah. So they find this one woman and she's black and she has no teeth. And she keeps laughing, and she has this pickup truck just with chickens in it. And I'm like, what is going on? Did this scene need to be here? I guess they the were trying to, like, counterpoint what was going on or keep the cops involved in the story. I did like the uh, the juxtaposition of the girls it's stuck in this hotel room with the, the bad guys, and the bad guys are, like, taking off their clothes. And then they cut back to the parents being all cutesy and <laughs> lovey-dovey, and the girls are being forced to be kissed, and then the parents have a, like, a cute little kiss, and it's just, it was... It it's was, like Goofus and Gallant. Yeah. Except <laughs> rape and romance. <laughs> oh, God. It's worth watching. It's a classic. It's good. It's, it's hokey. Yeah, I think it suffers, because a lot of those movies from the 70s just didn't age well. But for what it is, it's it's worth watching just so you can kind of see the starts of some portion of the genre, I guess. Also Wes Craven. Um, I think what I'm picking up is what he likes to do from the few amount of movies, but I guess we'll see as the week goes on, is that he likes to do um, spooky and uncomfortable subject matter while keeping some sort of brevity in there. All right, so yeah, last house on the left. All right, so hopefully we'll be able to keep this up throughout the month of October for the uh, the Halloween special. Uh, so check back later, subscribe if you feel like. Uh, cheers, folks. Cheers. Spooky, scary skeletons.